Okay, girls, ready for class? Let's go, get in line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, chain side, stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and chain. One, two. Like they were hell bent on world destruction? Yes. Am I getting they come in a spaceship? Yes. Were they communists? Yes. Did they personally abuse you or anybody else in the aerobics no. class? No. no. Did they no. have a ray gun? No. Did they have any other kind of weapon? Yes. Hi. So this alien kidnapped your aerobics instructor. So what did he look like? I was doing my jumping jacks and this thing came in the side door and he, he was so scary well, looking. To me for just, just a minute imagine here. how it was. It was just what I'm trying to tell you. It was like a nightmare. Really damn kitty really litter. Big eyes, long, long neck. Right you were always in the No, the alien, the alien. He has miracle food made from, from his earwax. The but then again, yeah. Yeah. well, he was kind of cute. Instructor, and I, I jogged out the back door because I was afraid to turn around. I even went down the street and called the police, and the police said to me, what are you, nuts? Do I look like I'm nuts? I don't know about that. But this damn kitty litter problem has got to be taken care of. Nothing's left but a dry bag of bones. That's right. It was driving out my aerobics instructor. I thought they were going to just come and get us and drag us all out. It's terrible. I've never been to a theater in my life. There will not be I promise you we'll do everything we can. We've gotten some other sightings, and we'll double check that with the information you've given us. Howard, can you pull that UFO file? God damn it, do I have to do everything around here? Hey, buddy, we wouldn't have a show without you. So, the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if we went over deadline on this issue. So if we go over deadline, what happens? I mean, I just started today. I hope they don't expect too much from me. Listen, kid, you've been writing for that college newspaper for four years. <laughs> You'll be able to write for this one. But I've never written for this type of a publication before. Did you ever take a creative writing course in college? <laughs> oh, yeah, but I didn't want to be the first one to mention it. Well, we don't get too many like you. So if you just forget everything you learned in school, you'll be okay. What in the world is going on around here? Don't these people want to keep their jobs? I believe Margaret has just heard we're behind schedule. 
Who is Margaret? Yes, Margaret Murdoch is your employer and she'll soon be telling you she has run this paper single-handedly since 1951. Anita! Margaret, how are you? You know very damn well how I am, Missy. Hmm? Would you please explain to me, with only four hours away from deadline, why there are three gaping holes in this issue? Margaret, remember you fired Joe Kopeck on Monday. We just hired Rick this morning. I'm training him as fast as I can. By the way, Margaret Murdoch, meet Rick Crookshank. I'm pleased to meet you. Very happy to be working with you. Oh, I'm charmed. Now, you sit down and you too. And will you explain to me why there's 4,500 words missing from this issue? The three stories we're missing are the ones you assigned to Joe. Crookshank here is taking over. I'm filling him in on our policies and procedures. Miss Murdoch, I'm going to do my best to get those stories done as quickly as is humanly possible. Yeah. And just what is humanly possible? Well, I think, let's see, 4,500 words in three hours, that's uh, 1,500 an hour. <laughs> Look, I'm sure we all realize this is just slightly impossible. Impossible? Impossible? Well, let me tell you some impossible things, son. My father started this paper on $100 at the height of the Depression. And when he died, the company was so in debt that the creditors were just about to take everything away from me. They even said it was impossible to keep the damn presses running. Well, let me tell you something, son. I cut everything back to the bone, got rid of all the dead wood. For the first seven months, I wrote every word of copy myself. I sold every ad. I had even learned to run the damn presses so I wouldn't have to pay union wages. And she distributed the papers herself. You're damn right I delivered those papers. Every day I got up at four in the morning and made the rounds. And some people said that was impossible. And now you're trying to tell me the three stories are impossible? Impossible. I don't know what that word means. And now, Mr. College, if you have a funk and waggles, you can just scratch that word right out of it. Miss Murdoch, I'm sorry. Sorry. It... That's another word that I don't like to hear. Now, everybody around here gets one good break, and this is yours. Howard, Howard, go into the file and get that story we wrote last October about the malt man from Paris. That's good for a second rerun. Anita. Joe wrote a story last month about some devil cult out in Arizona. Well, you rejected that one. Well, they did that to keep the little bastard from being so cocky. But we'll put that in the second slot. Rick, is it? That leaves a story due by ten. You think you can handle it? No problem. I'm raring to go. Huh? But which one of these do you want? Oh, let me see them. None of these are worth a damn. Come up with something new. Something new? Out of my way. I'll get them myself. Scat! Here's a spooky looking place. Put a frightened family in it and throw in a ghost for good measure. Oh, here's a nice shot of a cave. Cave stories go over well. I usually run one an issue. I'll run two this time. Who will know? And the picture doesn't have to be unusual. Here's a nice old man. Uh, make him an axe murderer from Tibet. And, oh, I don't know. Maybe he thinks he was Lizzie Barton in a previous life. Do I have to go any further? No, Mrs. Murdoch. I think I've caught on now. You know, the axe murderer sounds good to me. Good choice. You can't go wrong with an axe. Kid. I think you've got what it takes. Well, we're all squared away then? Except for the Rosencrucian group. They pull their ad at the last minute. What? They can't do that. They've got to give us 30 days notice. The ad stays in, and they're going to pay for it. Just what do they think this is? Another sleazy tabloid? Tabloid? Plot to discredit the fine reporting in that newspaper you bought. If you don't read the papers, how the hell are you gonna know if the ghost of Abraham Lincoln's in bed with Jack Hill? Man, if you don't think that's news, I've got some news for you. The barbecue of the dead won't be in the Saturday Review. The newspapers that advertise on national TV are the only ones that can satisfy inquiring minds like me. 
So stop the presses. What kind of shape are we in? If Ronald Reagan's long lost brother's living in a garbage bin. Stop the presses. We don't need no more pills. If an all fried okra diet is the cure for all our That's info I might need If Madonna's getting married I think I've got a right to know Just who it is I'm losing to And where they gonna go I'm always keeping up with foreign policy and stuff and we well-rounded readers know that news we ain't enough What intellectual college boy could ever ask for more Than to read the gospel truth in the checkout line at the grocery store So stop the presses How can I sleep in peace? If Lonnie Anderson is selling arms in the Middle East Stop the presses, I want to read the tale The mermaid is expecting and the father is a whale Stop the presses, let me check it out The baby born with the full beard, something I got to read about Stop the presses, and let me get my thrills The man from outer space is paying all Joan Collins bills Does regurgitate have two G's? Hmm? Regurgitate. <sighs> Look, would you see if I spelled it right? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. What do you think of that? The maniacal motel manager made mincemeat of the meek maid. The police later reported finding 50 axe wounds in the woman's mutilated corpse. That's good. But you're going to have to change that 50. An odd number always seems to have a more authentic ring to it. 47 axe wounds. See what I mean? Yeah. 47. Yeah. Hey, I'll go back and I'll change the 60 wax. It gives the blonde bedridden bimbo to 61. There you go. Well, how are you holding up? I've just got a couple more paragraphs. I'll get in on time. Uh, good. Howard can type set 1,500 words in no time. He should have most of this edition already finished. No, I that Howard does just about everything around here. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's been with Margaret since the very beginning. He's the backbone of this operation. Wait. Wait, that's it. Backbone. See, after the guy gets executed, the autopsy reveals that he had a misaligned spine, which put pressure on his brain, Making him a mass murderer. Yeah! Yeah! Now, now or ever, come through with your money or no ass. What do you mean by bringing trash like this in a classy place, huh? I have to read it here. Wife won't let me read it at home. Why do you have to read it at all? Don't you get enough of this crap at work? They say you can't get too much of a good thing. <laughs> the What's the damages? Two and a quarter. You cutting back? Yeah. Doc said I had to quit using my liver for a liquor sponge. Cut yourself? Yes, I sure did. Kind of sticks out. Like a sore thumb. You don't know how many times I've heard that today.
Hey, Howard, you forgot your... How you doing? How you doing? Good as hell. Ain't you got something for me? Hell yes. Here you go, have a beer and I'll be uh, right out. Good for nothing, son of a bitch. Sixty bucks. Sixty. What do you mean sixty? Told me fifty yesterday. This is today, Lester. I'm just trying to make a living. Can't afford to give discounts. This better be good shit. I may be coming after your ass. It's a bargain. I guarantee it. Well, I'm gonna take this to my cousin Rambo. He's studying to be a pharmacist. Well, he's a drug expert. And if this don't meet up to his uh, expectations, we're gonna be coming back for a full refund. Trust me, Lester. You just got yourself the best deal in town. A hell of a deal. May I serve you, sir? Uh, what's this yellow green looking stuff? That's today's special. It's vegetable surprise. What's it got in it? It's a surprise. Uh, I believe I'll just have some pintos and some corn. I think you made the right choice. Why in the hell do you have to turn it up so loud? I guess I might have to buy you a damn hearing aid. You ain't gonna buy me nothing, you lazy good for nothing bum. You ain't even got a job. Listen here, you old woman. I'm self employed. What you call freelance. I went into business myself, so I don't need a job. You a dope pusher. As far as I'm concerned, that don't qualify you for that freelance shit. Besides that, it ain't even legal. Here you go judging me when all you do is sit there in front of that TV all day, all night, and every other damn time. Who do you think paid for that TV? And that couch you sleep on? Debbie paid for every damn stick of furniture in this house. Hell yes, she did. I'm her husband, and that makes me the man of this house. And don't you forget it. Good for nothing, son of a bitch. You can join us. I don't believe this shit. I already smoked a whole goddamn bag and I ain't even high yet. Now that ain't natural. Is it, Rambo? Hell no, it ain't natural. Motherfucker ripped you off on that dope. Well, hell, that dog never was worth a shit anyway. We might as well just shoot his ass. That's for damn sure. 
like pregnant and everything. I don't know if we ought to kill him. Yeah, fucking ain't we should kill him. Do the kid a favor. <laughs> <laughs> You're my beer drinking man, Dove. That's for damn sure. I'm glad to get off work. Twelve hours on your feet's a long time. Especially in my condition. Hell, Debbie, we're gonna need that money when the baby comes. After that sucker drops, you won't be able to go back to work for at least a week. You know, I was thinking, maybe after the baby gets old enough, we might can move off somewhere else. You know, get a new start. Maybe even get a new house. A double wide. That's right, I want a double wide trailer. Nothing but the best for us. Now, honey, I'm just getting my business started. Pretty soon, I'm gonna be a big man in this town. I'll get us a double wide. And a VCR, too. You can count on it. <laughs> You're the most wonderful man in the known world. Fuck! Hey, if we don't find that motherfucker soon, we'll go back to his house and wait on him. Hey, yeah, while we're waiting, we'll take that dumbass mother-in-law in and rape the hell out of her. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, hipster, you can have her all to yourself. Yeah, she's all yours, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's that son of a bitch now. Oh, shit. We got trouble now. Hold on, honey. Can't this piece of shit go any faster? What do you do to them boys to piss them off so much? I don't know, some kind of misunderstanding or something. Well, why don't you just stop this car and straighten this thing out? I think they aim to kill us, Debbie. And I'm not one to give up my life so easy. Well, hell, why didn't you say so? I've already took care of this thing. Those motherfuckers are history. Oh, shit. Oh, you said your prayers this morning, Debbie. I have a feeling we may be meeting our maker before this day's over. You don't have nothing to worry about. You just keep driving as fast as you can. <laughs> Now I'm getting serious. I stopped. I think I just killed Rambo, honey. Those boys will think twice before messing with us again. Honey, you just made a big mistake.
damn it. Rambo was a good old boy. I'm gonna miss him. Hell, everybody in this town is gonna miss Rambo. <laughs> he wasn't just another person floating through this sea of life. Waiting on the day he could go and be with Jesus. He was devoted to helping mankind while he's on this earth. He offered himself over to the science of pharmacy. And I guarantee you, he never filled one prescription without first trying the drug out on himself. We ain't gonna let those son of a bitches get away with this, are we? No way. We're going over there right now, we're gonna kill every one of them. Don't you worry, Rambo. We'll be back to get you after we kill these son of a bitches. Come on, woman. You better get your butt moving. Damn it, Dub. Wait for me. Mama! Mama, Mama, listen to me. Now, honey, I'm watching my family feud right now. Run on, and we'll talk about it after Mama, this is serious. Honey, if you got fired, don't you worry about it. That lazy-ass husband of yours just gonna have to go get himself a job. Mama, I just killed a man. Well, honey, if you did, you sure killed the wrong one because Dub just came walking through here and he didn't even look sick. I do feel sorry for what I've done and I already prayed to the Lord and asked for forgiveness and everything. Well, all right, then. Why don't you just hush and let me watch my family? Because I have a feeling that two men are coming here right now to kill us all in revenge for what I've done. Well, hell, baby, why don't you say so? Dub? Dub, you better get your ass out here right now. We got some business to talk over. All right, this is it. The moment of truth. It's kill or be killed. And every man for himself. Mama, keep watch for us. I need to talk to Debbie in private. Go ahead, talk all you want. I'll take them all on single-handed. They gonna be sorry they fucked with us. If you want your wife, and her mama to live, better come on out of here right now. Honey, I know I haven't been the best man in the world to you, but I hope I come close. Oh, Doug, you're so good. And just listen to me. This may be the end. I might get killed, or you might get killed. We don't know about that stuff till it happens. Well, what I'm getting down to is that I love you. <laughs> I've always loved you and I always will. And, well, if you die, I'll wait at least six months before I remarry. Oh, honey, you say the sweetest things to me. What? <laughs> God damn it. Come on, Lester. Don't you think we better go help Mama? She said she could handle it by herself. Come on. Debbie, put that thing down. That gun's too big for a pregnant woman. Hush, this gun was made for me. That's it, honey. All right, hipster, I'm hurt too bad. I don't think I can make it much longer. Now, don't give me that shit, Lester. People get shot every day and live through it. You're gonna be fine. Go over to Dub's car. You're a crazy man. I'll be killed. Listen, I want you to go around to the Rambler and get in. Dub always keeps his keys in there. Wait just a minute, Lester. <laughs> Look, somebody's gotta do it. We gotta get out of here and get help. I get out from behind this truck, and I'm a dead man. Listen, I'll cover you. Trust me. OK. I'll do it. <laughs> Damn, that flows. God damn, Lester thinks he's invincible. But I got news for him. I got something special planned just for him. What are you gonna do? Just keep on shooting, you'll see.
shoot his ass off, honey. <laughs> Hell, he don't have all wheels. I take back all the bad things I said about you. You're a damn good shot, and I'm proud to have you as a mother-in-law. <laughs> See, it's times like these when we forget our petty differences and realize just how important we are to each other. Oh, oh I think I'm going to drop this sucker any minute now. Oh, it's the excitement. She's going into labor. Well, come on. Let's get her to the hospital now. We don't have time to get her to the hospital. She's about to give birth. Well, take her on in the house, and I'll go get the doctor. Piece of shit, this is an emergency. Dub, Dub, you better get yourself in here. What's going on? How's Debbie? What about the baby? Everything's just fine. Debbie's as healthy as a horse, and you got you a handsome son, Dub. This is the happiest day of my life. You just wait right here. I'll be right back. He's a beautiful boy. He's got my eyes. And he's got my beard. <laughs> Anything in particular, or just life in general? Oh, hi, Gus. No, I was just talking about this piece of trash. What, the Howard? Leave one of his papers behind. Yeah, I'm almost embarrassed of it sitting on my bar. I noticed you stopped reading when I walked in the door. Hey, I was just glancing at it. <laughs> okay, sure. Just bring me a cold one. Sure thing. Little B's beer man. I'll be right back. not to talk to strangers. Don't go near that man. You don't know where he's been.
Right, son. I am. Why? What are you doing? It's all right. You run on back to bed. This probably isn't really happening. That's right. What was it? I don't know. Is that you? In the flesh, sort of. How are you, Marietta? I can't really complain. Marietta! Harry! I'm so glad you both could come. I wouldn't have missed it, AC. <laughs> now, you two just sit right down, got meat on the grill, be ready in a jiffy. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Swan. Oh, isn't this a lovely setting? Yeah. So how goes it, AC? Wonderful. Just wonderful. That's why I invited the two of you back. You must tell us all about it. Yeah, what's up? How are those burgers coming? They smell delicious. First, you both must tell me how it's been for you. Not sure I follow you, pal. Do you mean in the... Exactly. Well, uh, it was dark. Is that how you describe it, Harry? Yep. Dark? Yep. I, I think that sums it up. It, it's darker than the Dickens. Awfully dark, AC. Okay. Who's ready? I've got a couple of good ones here. You know I'll have one. <laughs> well done, I hope. <laughs> Can't be too careful. <laughs> I want a hot, juicy one. Uh, I'm so hungry I could eat mm. shoe leather. Here you go. Oh, this is wonderful. Just look at those burgers. 
There's nothing like food cooked outdoors. Oh, ain't hey, that the truth? Just grab a root and growl. <laughs> Get over here and join us, A.C. I'll be there in just a minute. I want to get the rest of the meat started. <laughs> you better hurry up. You're going to miss out all together. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Something special. Ooh, you know I just love good corn. Mm, you can't beat it with a stick. My son, Chuck, he used to love his corn. You know, I seem to recall Chuck saying he liked to hear corn now and then. He'd get me to make extra so he could have cold corn the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, A.C. Haven't lost your appetite, have you? Never knew you to be a timid eater. I want to know. For heaven's sakes, what is it? Spit it out, pal. Don't either of you have anything to say about it? Just what do you mean? Come to the point, fella. Don't tell me you've been lying there, rotting in the grave all this time. What else? You honestly don't know. There's a universe out there, by God. Don't you know you're free? You know how I feel about that universe stuff, A.C. I don't think we ever should have put anybody on the moon. We got enough trouble right here on Earth. I think we ought to be spending our money right here. To tell you the truth, I've been too worried about my daughter Ethel and her two kids to even think about going out. It's just dreadful what that poor girl and the children have had to put up with. They don't need your worry. Now, don't you think you're being a little rough on her, fella? What's wrong with you two? We don't all think alike, A.C., you know that. This is still a free country. At least it was last time I checked. When I think about that hooligan she married and all he's done, I just oh, there, get... There, there, oh, Mary, I... Don't... I didn't come here to ruin the barbecue by forcing my troubles on everyone. We'll have a good time. Say, the lawn looks awful good this year. Uh, have you had any trouble with chinch bugs? Well, shit. It's a long time since I worried about the lawn, Harry. A person should take pride in his home and lawn. What's wrong? Are you angry with us? Oh, no, he ain't angry at us. He just got some kind of burr under his saddle about something, that's all. Hey, ain't that right, A.C.? No, Harry. That's not right. I called the two of you back here to see if, in death, you had finally learned what you could never learn in life. <laughs> and just what might that be? Ah! Both of you are fools. If you love your grave so much, you may have... Thank <laughs> you. 
Jane, Rebecca, Sawyer, I told you not to go over there. What do you think you're doing? That man was a stranger and he was reading this filthy tabloid. <laughs> he could be a pervert and have germs. Don't you dare touch your face until we get to some soap and water. We're going straight Ow. home and take a bath, young lady. What's this? Killer vacuum destroys town? Huh. That's the same kind of vacuum cleaner I have. Will you shut that one, damn thing off? Wherever it stops, that's where the next tornado is going to hit. Watch out, Terry, right there, right there. You're... Oh, no. You are not funny. Hey, come on. Come on, this Tuttle stuff is so ridiculous, I can't help myself. Reggie, there is nothing ridiculous about predicting catastrophes before they happen. Please, we're about to go on the air. Hey, have I screwed up anything yet? No. Look, Reggie, I just want to keep my job, okay? So I'm just going to ignore you and hope you go away. Camera three is locked in. And now the 10 o'clock news report from Channel 6 with Michelle Randolph and Thomas Olney. Bill Faye, Castle on do you have your set on? Walter's going to be the first one up again. I can't believe this is happening. Faye, I don't want to talk about Rose, but I told you not to let her fix her vacuum cleaner. Yes, that's her damn dog. If it isn't Rose bothering me, it's that ugly mud of hers. I'll never get any peace around here. But the storm system's general area of touchdown as well. Walter's methods have been put to the test twice. Rose has been out of school all week. Jeez, I can't wait till she goes back. Anyway, do you know that Walter's getting calls from all over the place? The world investigator called just yesterday. Fortunately, no one was injured. The Mesquite shopping mall was another area hit hard by a tornado this week. Thanks to Walter's accurate forecast, store personnel... No, he hasn't told me how he does it yet. I know, the first thing I'm going to do is open up a charge account at Lord & Taylor. Walter's precise forecasting has caught the attention of the entire nation. Channel 6 is now proud Faye, to don't you Walter start putting the make on Walter. You got a and husband of your own. Here tonight oh, Faye, I won't forget you no matter Walter? how famous we become. Thank you, Michelle. There he is, Faye. It's a Look at the little bow tie. And well, I got that for him. Detection. I only wish I could devise a way to... Walter, you know, you need a little help with his wardrobe. <laughs> oh, come on. Faye, I'm telling you the truth. I don't know how he does it. Oh, Faye, that's ridiculous. Where did you hear that story? Which will be crossing our area later on this evening. Come on, Terry, not even you can pass up a wishbone. Come on, give it a chance. Oh, you, you could win. Oh, all right, all right. Now and continuing through early morning. Flash flood warning is now in effect for all... You won, you got your wish. Uh, residents in low-lying areas are urged to stay tuned to local TV and radio stations for further updates in case evacuations become necessary. 
No, I no didn't. No need for everyone to worry, though. According to my figures, the major urban areas will be spared the brunt of the storm. My calculations are not as precise as I would like them to be. However, I feel confident in saying that the people in the northeast section of town, in and around Garland, should take all the necessary precautions. The alert will be in effect between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. I know. There'll be more on this later on in the newscast. Uh, Michelle? Oh, come on. Lorraine Thank thinks you, everybody's Walter. a kook. We'll be back with She's more a news, kook. sports, and a movie review right after this message. Listen, Faye, there's well, nothing to worry about. about. Walter knows what he's talking George about. He hasn't been wrong yet, has he? Leading with primordial passion. No tornado would dare to be down there. What? Wait, let me turn this down. Faye, I can't hear anything with all that noise in the background. Blake, will you please play outside? I can't hear a word your Aunt Faye is saying. I'm telling you about Lynn Smith Auto Sales. Why, there are more cars there than you can throw a cow chip across. With down payment starting as low as three hundred dollars. Oh, oh, Faye, what is going on over there? He's a pussy cat. While well, he'll even trade in your Faye? bucket of votes, cash your payroll, Faye, check and you're finance scaring with your job me. as credit. And as what he says, found? if you can't get a car from me, you what just can't get it. What is happening to you? My God, Faye! Faye! Open nine tonight. Faye! Now, you can go to that little room. this whole thing was over with. It was a horrible sound. I thought it was a vacuum cleaner at first. But then it got louder. She died right on the phone. <laughs> I'll never get over it. Never I won't. Honey, we'll get away from here. I mean, the, the network called me this morning. One more prediction, and I've got the job. I'm sure of it. Then this nightmare will be over with. I want to get away from here. It's just horrible. It's just horrible. <laughs> just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. That bitch won't have to wait long. <laughs> Of this. Now, Frida, you're under a lot of strain. Now, get a hold of yourself. 
This isn't going to help anything. She's your daughter. You deal with her. Just look at this room. It's a mess. It smells like she tried to burn the place down. I can't do anything with her. She'll never get married the way she is. No guy would live with her. We'll be stuck with her for the rest of our lives. My sister's dead, and that girl's a drink. She's a drink. Now, oh, come on, honey, 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 calm down. It's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Now, look, you're just going up to bed. Go on. I'll handle Rose. Rose, I want to know what's going on right now. I was working on one of my experiments, that's all. Rose, your mother is upset enough without you making it worse. Now, what was that sound that upset her so much? It was nothing. I crossed a few wires and they short-circuited. A little smoke and a little noise, that's all. Is there more to this than you're telling me? I mean, first your school, then the place where you work. If you had anything to do with Faye's death... It was nothing. God, you're starting to get as paranoid as she's getting. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Forget that, forget that. What about that prediction you gave me today? It was 10 miles off. I thought you said it was foolproof. I mean, I would have included the whole town in the warning if I had only known. Everything has been perfect up until now. I guess you can't count on my brain to be perfect all the time. You got your tornado, didn't you? Look, I don't want to hear any more about your dreams unless you're sure they're going to happen. I mean, if you don't get a clear set of coordinates, I don't want to hear about it. I will not use them. Dad, I'm on your side. I'm only trying to help you get ahead. I'm only trying to help you with my gift. Well, that gift almost got me fired today. Faye being killed? Your mother's just... She's not my mother and she never will be. My mother died four years ago, so don't call her my mother. Rose, I want you to get along with her. I mean, a little housework. Humor her a little bit. A little housework? Are you blind? Look at my hands. She treats me like a piece of dirt around here. She's the dirt and I'm gonna... What? Do what? I'm gonna keep from helping her. Why won't you listen to me? Rose, as long as you were living with us and she is in charge of this house, you will deal with her, and you will do housework. Do you understand me? Yes. Now, I've got to go to your mother. Remember, just, just one more good prediction, and I'll have that job in New York cinched. Then we can throw away all this supernatural stuff. Yeah, sure, Dad. Clock. What did you do? Stay up all night working on this junk heap again? You're lucky your father understands you. This crap would end up in my garage sale. Here, now do something constructive. You're not going to hang out here and waste the whole day. I know you can hear me. Now get dressed and come downstairs. Do what you want. I don't care. I can have you replaced tonight. Go ahead and fire me. I know you won't do that because I'm the hottest thing you've got. You're under contract. I'll sue you if you don't finish the year out. I'll sue you for invasion of privacy. Since when did you start reading people's phone messages? Oh, come off it, Tuttle. You can't hide the fact that a bunch of network people are calling here. And look, now what does just one more in your in really mean? When it happens, you'll be the first to know. Oh, look, Tuttle, whatever happens, you better turn over that prediction formula. You use my facilities to develop it, and I want a piece of it. I'm sorry, Miss Peters. I can't talk about that right now. I've got to prepare the weather forecast. Oh, excuse me, Miss Peters, Mr. Tuttle. 
Uh, there's a phone call holding on line two for you, Mr. Tuttle. It's your daughter. Thank you very much. You arrogant son of a bitch. Tuttle, I'm gonna have your ass. <laughs> Rose, hi. Already? Are you sure? Great, great. Uh, uh, hold on, uh, let me get a pencil and paper. All right. All right, oh, this could be the one. Yeah, oh, 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 thanks a lot, honey, thanks a lot. I I'll get on this right away. Bye. <laughs> I never knew I had a drinking problem. I refused to admit it. Until the day I ran over my cat. Uh, Mr. Tuttle, I have a message here from your daughter. Well, what is it? Uh, she says she read you the wrong set of coordinates this morning and that she wants to give you the right ones. Uh, uh, listen, go plot those coordinates on the map in my office. Now, I need this information pronto. I'm going on in a few minutes, so hurry up. Hurry up. Go! Walter, I'm not fixing that hair again. We're here with Florina Washington of Athens, Texas, to prove that grab detergent outpowers even the toughest dirt. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, cut hey, it hey, out. Hey, come on. Oh, this is clumsy when he's drinking. Well, no matter. Grab will grab the stain right out of that dirt. Now it's been through the washer. Let's see if that That's wine stain is it. I'm going to wring her neck. Rose, you better get down here and pronto. I'll be right there, Mom. There's proof positive. Grab, grab stains better than any leading detergent. Well, Terry, the moment you've been waiting for. for anyone I know you're going to laugh this time no matter what your head tells you. I got some tapes here that's going to help Walter with his weather forecast. I know this stuff will get a reaction out of you. Listen, Reggie, nothing is going to get a reaction out of here. But you are going to get a big reaction out of this if any of that crap goes out over the air. Listen, I got your white tornado here. I got your Tasmanian devil. I even got clips from the National Weather Service. The land lay as flat and monotonous as the sea itself. Rose, I told you to keep that dog in your room or the backyard. Now look at this mess. Clean it up right now. And if there's even a hint of stain left on this rug, you're going to pay to have it steam clean. That'll teach you. Sure, Mom, I'll do it right away. And don't give me any guff about it either. I'm glad you see it my way. And when you're finished, sweep out the garage. Okay, Mom. And don't you dare turn on that thing while I'm trying to watch television. I hope you've learned your lesson with that one. We're going to set up camp right here. Come on. The blue tail geese. Mr. Tuttle, Mr. Tuttle, I have information. Well, come on, boy. Give it to me. Mr. Tuttle, I don't know if someone's pulling your leg, but there's new coordinates. Damn it, kid. I'll fire you. So those coordinates you gave me, they indicate your house. What? They indicate your house. 
That's right, that your hell. The tornado is in your hell. I mean, I don't know if I should tell you or not, but I mean, I decided to, that, that the tornado is in your hell. I mean, how could a tornado be in your hell? I mean, of, of all places, the tornado is in your hell. I, I mean, I've been an assistant, I've been in this production system for so many years, and, and never have I ever seen a tornado in someone's hell. It's in your house, the weatherman's hell. Well, I really appreciate it. I didn't think I'd be here this year to get any more mail. But the doctors say I got plenty of time. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You'll join us minutes. next week. Hey, we journey to hey look at that. Kentucky Looks like Walter just got out of the shower. Until then, I'm right there. Old hey, somebody tell Samantha to go see Walter. Happy, he needs a wipe down. Oh, poor Samantha having to put up with that guy. Frida, thank God. Frida, get get Blake and get out of the house now. Honey, calm down. Five. And what now are you talking the 10 about? News report from Channel Four. Six, with Michelle Buchanan and Thomas Olney. Three. Bill Castle on Sports. Another tornado update from Weather and Walter Tuttle. Two. One. And now the news. Q anchor. Good evening. This is the 10 o'clock report Walter, you're about to go on the air. Weatherman Walter yeah, Tuttle no, tops I'm the not. news again yeah. tonight. Walter My God, your job, Walter. Three you're going to lose your job. Weeks. I don't and understand. Here with a fourth. And to explain a tornado what here. Wrong with yesterday's Rose. Rose. Walter. And take camera one. No, no, no. Don't ask any more questions. Just do it. Please, <gasps> listen to me. Oh, my God. For God's sake, get out. Hurry up. Please. My God, Terry, this is going out over the air. Rose is going to kill you. She'll kill you. What do you mean? I don't have any time to explain. You, Rose has found a way to create tornadoes. Right Rita, get now. out of there. You haven't got much time. You're not making any sense. Honey, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. It's I didn't right. predict these tornadoes. Oh, Rose oh. did. I didn't know what she was no. up to. No one knew. No. Now it's too late. Yep. Yeah. Honey, it's it's the vacuum cleaners, honey. It's the Mr. vacuum Tuttle, cleaners. Mr. Get as far away from the oh. vacuum cleaners as oh, you can. I have to take you out of here. I have Rita, to take you out of here. Get away from the camera. Get away from me. Rita, did you hear me? Rita. Rita, get away from the vacuum cleaner. Rita, did you hear me? Are you there? Rose. She's tampered with the vacuum cleaner somehow. I, I can't explain it. I don't know how, but they create tornadoes. She, she, uh, she kept telling me it was psychic or something, but she was making... I, I have no control over them. Please, I don't want you to die. You've got to live, Frida. You don't want to live. Stop the vacuum cleaner. Stop them, Frida. Look at me, Walter. Your Stop. hair. Frida. Don't let the vacuum cleaner get you. It'll kill you. It You've got to, to destroy it. You, you've got to do something. You'll be killed. Uh, 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 oh. No, you can't. No, don't no, take me off the air. I don't give a damn what that Mr. Peter said. Yes. She can have the job. She can have anything. Uh, you can't let me stay on the air. I'm going my son. Like, Rita, listen to me. Don't give up. You've got to fight it. Rita, can you hear me all this time? Don't let this happen. Please, don't. Off the big Stop. It'll kill you. Is my new car? Get out of the house. Get your mother out of the house. She, it, it killed Faye. Get it is. They create tornadoes or something. I don't understand it myself. <laughs> She's going to kill again. <gasps> oh, Walter. God. No, what are we going to do? Frito. What's wrong with you? Don't get killed. Look at me, Walter. Oh, my God. Oh, can hear me. The guy has flipped his it. lid. Uh, no, do you want me to cut to a commercial or back to the it. anchor? I, I don't oh, Walter. Save yourself. Save Blake. For God's sake, get out of there. You got to leave. You don't have much time. Please, get out of here. I don't want to die. I, I can't. I can't handle. I can't stop anything. Please. I can hear it coming. How do you get out of the house? Oh God! I can't do anything. It's happening, and I can't do anything. Get her out of the house. Oh God! Please. Please. Frida, get out of the house. It's coming. I know it's coming. Please. Frida, it was Rose. Oh, okay, oh, go to a commercial. God, it's too late. I can't.
Janie, let's go. Mama, why are you reading that trash? I didn't read it. I was just checking to see if there had been a recall on our vacuum cleaner. Want to go out for dinner and a movie? You like steak, don't you? Sure. I can't get this far to light. Barry, bring me some papers. What's this? Oh, God, it's one of those sleazy tabloids. Oh, come on, what's wrong with these? I read them all the time. Sure. Thank you. Look at this. New strain of herpes wipes out Arizona trailer park. Swinging mobile home community plagued by lust virus. <laughs> What's gross? Sounds like fun. This is trash. Get it out of here. Oh man, don't you want to get caught in a lust virus? Maybe someday. Maybe one day. <laughs> We'll eat in a minute. <laughs> what have we here? <sighs> Looks like a little newspaper. Hardly a newspaper, my friend. This is a prime example of yellow journalism. Let's just see what gems of outlandish fiction are offered to the masses herein. Tell me what it has to say, my friend. Very well. Let me see. Here. Here's an item of particular interest. Mutilated corpses of vagrants discovered in dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody we know? Hmm. What's taking that guy so long? I don't know, Mr. President. He should be here now. There he is. Here it is, sir. I'm sorry, but the delivery was delayed. Well, all right. Oh, Nancy, look at this one. BBQ of the dead. Imagine. <laughs> Sort of reminds me of the dinner we held for Gorbachev on the White House lawn. <laughs> oh, Nancy, you're such a cut up. <laughs> well, give me half. Just, just, just. 
I'm sure having a hard time believing. 